Hi students, this is Mr. Yang. Today we are going to talk about 4.19a, where we will learn how to graph something called piecewise function. So first, let's define piecewise function. Piecewise function is a function that is defined on a few different intervals. In other words, defined by several pieces. Some real life example, like for example, uh, class periods, say uh, from 8 to uh, 8.50, that's our first period. So uh, we can say, oh, this is our first period, and it's 8 to 8.50. So for 8 to 8.50, they're all first period. Then the second period is a different time, so that's a piecewise function, the right pieces. For doctor's appointment, the same thing, type, different time slots. Rental books, you'd rent a book for several days. It's the same book that's being rented by you for several days. Library uh, computer use or phone bills, these are all examples of uh, piecewise function. Each function inside a piecewise function has its own domain, and there is no overlap between the domains. The domain of the overall function is the unit of all of these smaller domains. A piecewise function looks like the following. f of x equals, then we have this curly braces. For the first function, there is a certain domain. For the second function, there is a certain domain. And for the third function, there is a certain domain. A piecewise function could have as many functions as possible, as long as the domains are not overlapping. And we're fine. So uh, now let's see an actual piecewise function and how to graph it with steps. Example with steps. For this one, first step, draw light dotted lines to separate the graph according to the endpoints of the domain. If you look at the domain, I have a two here, another two here. That's clearly the endpoint. And the when we say draw a line, a vertical line is actually on x equals two. So the line we're going to draw is right here. That is the x equal to line. Step two, graph each function separately. I'm going to change color. This is the first function we are going to graph. Negative 2x plus 1. That's negative 2 over 1 as the slope. And the y-intercept is 1. So 1, and then down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. I'm just going to draw a bit more so that I can um, graph it a bit more precise. So that is my first line. And then I'm going to graph the second line. Let me change it to a different color. This is my second line, 5x over 4. I can do it as 5 over 1x. So uh, it's at negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then up 5 over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1. And bottom, we have another point there. So basically, this is our line. It's not quite straight, but uh, kind of the idea is there. There we go. And next step is actually the important step. Based on the domain, decide which part of the each function is kept. And we are going to erase the part that is not kept. So let's first look at the green one. The green one says x is less than or equal to 2. This is the line that's x equal to 2. To, uh, when is x or, uh, is less than or equal to 2, that's clearly to the left of it. So that means for the green line, we are going to keep this part on the left of this red line and then erase the right side. We're going to keep the left side. And next, for the blue one, it says x is greater than 2. That's clearly to the right of this, uh, this red line. So I'm going to keep this part, but I'm going to get rid of the rest. I don't need the rest. And of course, let me draw some arrows because they are actually going forever on that end. And that's the third step. Last step. Based on the domain, decide if the endpoints are open circles or closed circles for each function. Open circle when it's greater than or less than, uh, a greater than or less than sign. Closed circle is when it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So if you look at the green one. This is great that this is less than or equal to. It does have an equal sign, so it means this point right here is going to be a closed circle. But for the other one, it's x, x is greater than 2, so it shouldn't include the point on 2. So this is going to be an open circle right there on 2. I draw it a bit big, but just for you to see clear on 2, there is an open circle. So that is how we graph the uh, piecewise function. Now let's talk a bit more about this piecewise function. First, I'm going to uh, graph it again uh, at x equals 
2, and I already know this part 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is going to be right here in the open circle and going top right. And then the other one is going to be 1, 2, then down here, a solid point, and then a bunch of points that's pointing to the top left. Hey, that's my uh, that's my graph. You can also decide on the overall domain and range after we finish. First, you can see my graph is going to the left on this tip and going to the right on that side. So the domain is clearly negative infinity to positive infinity. You can also look at the domain from the function. We have everything covered for less than or equal to 2. We also have everything covered greater than 2. So that means everything on the x is covered, so negative infinity to positive infinity. As for the range, that is the y value. So we're going to look from the bottom. My lowest point is actually right here. That is my lowest point at negative 3. So clearly, my range is going to start there. And you can see the graph. It is going all the way up. And maybe you're looking at this side, you're like, wait, but I don't have anything here. However, I do have points on the green one. So that part is still covered. Just the lowest point for both graphs together is negative 3. So that means my range is going to start from negative 3 with a square bracket going all the way to infinity. And next, it is a function. We have something called vertical line test that you have learned before. That means just draw a bunch of vertical lines. And if every single time you're just hitting one point on these vertical lines that you draw, then it is a function. The only part that might be a bit tricky is when you draw a line exactly on x equals 2. Well, there is only one solid dot right here. The top is an open circle. So if you draw a vertical line there, you still just have one intersection at this bottom point. So that still is a function. Next, f of negative 4. That is for you to decide which domain and which function to use when x is actually negative 4. When x is negative 4, you clearly should be um, using the top one because the top one has x is less than or equal to 2. Negative 4 is clearly fitting into that domain. So it's negative 2 times negative 4 plus 1, which is going to give you a positive 9. Next, when f of, uh, f of 8, this time, is greater than 2. So clearly, I'm going to use the second one. So it's 5 times 8 minus 4, which is 40 minus 4, which is 36. And next, f of 2. Uh, even though both domain mention 2, only the top one has an equal sign for 2. So you have to use the top one. Negative 2 times 2 plus 1 is negative 3. That is fully the first uh, the, the, the example. Now let's look at the first practicing example. f of x equals 5. This is basically saying y equals 5. Well, before I look at the function, let's actually look at the end point first. I forgot about that. They're both at negative 3. So I'm going to draw a line on x equals negative 3, which is the vertical line right here. Next, uh, the first function is basically y equals 5. That is my first one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to draw a horizontal line at 5. Uh, y equals 5 means it has to cross the y-axis. So it's basically all the points that has y value as 5. So it's this horizontal line. Then the second one is negative 2x or negative 2 over 1x minus 3. So negative 3 is right here. Down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, or up to left 1, up to left one, up to left one. So I can draw my line right here. That is my second line. Now it's time to start erasing. Let's deal with the uh, the green one first. X is less than or equal to negative three, so that's clearly to the left of it. So I'm going to keep everything on the left side of this red line and erase the right side. And next, the blue one is greater than negative 3. Greater than negative 3 is, that means it's to the right of it. So I'm going to need to keep the right side of the blue line and erase the rest. And next, I'm going to need to decide what kind of circles I draw. This one has an equal sign, so that is a closed circle for the first, equation, first uh, function. The other one is just greater than, so I'm going to need an open circle right there. And let me actually draw the arrows. 
you can still see my graph is going from left to the right. So that just means the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. And if you look at the domain here, again, everything is covered. And the range, this time, if I look from the bottom, clearly there's an arrow, so it goes all the way down. That means I'm, my range is starting from negative infinity, going up, going up. You can see right here, I'm actually not hitting any number right there. So this is just to a uh, to three, and it's actually an open circle. The, the reason I need to separate, I can't just say five, is because as you can see, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. I don't have like 3.5 or 4 or 4.5 or 4.4, whatever. I don't have any number between 3 and 5. So I have to put a stop at 3. But then I can't just leave that close this line right here, 5, alone. I still need to include it, but since it's only one number, I'm putting it inside 3 braces. That is the range. Function, well, if you draw a bunch of vertical lines, clearly I'm hitting points, so that, yes. It is a function. f of negative 3, uh, negative 3 has an equal sign on the first function, so f of negative 3 is 5. As for f of 0, f of 0 is clearly in the second domain because it's greater than negative 3. And I need to use the second one, negative 2 times 0 minus 3, which is negative 3. Next, when x is 3, clearly that's also in the second one, so negative 2 times 3 minus 3, which is negative 9. That is my example 1. Next, example two. This time, I have x is less than one, x equal to one, and x is greater than one. All of them has the endpoint one. So that means I do have a uh, line to draw at x equals one right there. So at least I can still know my graph is mainly to the left of it or to the right of it. That's kind of the parts. Let's deal with the first one is x is uh, x plus 1. So the, the slope is 1 over 1. Is that 1? Then it's 1 up, 1 over, 1 up, 1 over. I just have a bunch of points that is going diagonal. There's my, uh, there's my line. And the next one is x equals, just, y equals just 3. So that's a, clearly a horizontal line at just 3. And the last one is 1 minus x, which is negative x plus 1. So it's basically the slope is negative 1 over 1. So at 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. That's constantly uh, going down. So there is my line right there. Okay, now it's time to decide which part to erase. The first one, x is less than 1. So that's clearly to the right of this line. So I'm going to keep all of that up until the red line and erase the rest. Next, the, uh, the blue one. Well, the blue one is tricky. It's only x equals 1. So that means I don't have anything to the left of it. I also don't have anything to the right of it. The only thing I have left is right on the line. Right there. No left. All right, nothing else. So I only have one point left right here. Now the last function, it's x is greater than one, so clearly I'm going to keep the right side of it. So the right side from the red line is right here. I don't have the left side. And let me also draw the other arrow right here. Okay, and now it's time to decide on um, open circle, closed circle. These are both. Uh, less than or greater than, there's no equal sign, so I have an open circle here for the green one. And I also have an open circle for the purple one. For the purple one. Okay, now it's time to decide on the domain. Left arrow, right arrow, so clearly negative three, positive infinity. As for the range, Everything starts from all the way on the bottom, so start from negative infinity. And let's see where it stops. Right here, it feels like it stopped because there's an open circle, but the green thing is the green line is still cover everything until you got to right there, which is at two. That's where it stops because I don't have anything between a two and a three. And since the two is an open circle, I gotta use parentheses. And then I still have a solid dot at three, just at three, so I'm gonna use curly braces. 
as far as the function, well, lines, 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 lines. And even if you draw a line directly on uh, x equals 1, well, you are just hitting one point. That's the blue point. You're not hitting the green or the purple part. So it is a function. f of negative 8, that's clearly in the first function of, because negative 8 is less than 1, which is negative 8 plus 1, which is negative 7. Next, when x is 1, well, that's the, the only, only the middle one is actually x equal to 1. So f of 1 is 3. Lastly, f of 8. 8 is greater than 1, so it's got to be the last one. 1 minus 8 is negative 7. And that is example 2. Lastly, example 3. Let's uh, draw the end points first. I have end points, not just one of them. I have zeros and I have threes. So that means I have two lines I need to draw. One is at x equals 0, and the other is at x equals 3. Let's start with the first function, 2 over 1x minus 2. So negative 2 is here, then is up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, keep going, keep going, or the other direction, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. I have my line right there. Okay. Next. It is just a negative 1. That means it's a flat line at negative 1, right there. And lastly, I have negative 4x plus 6, or negative 4 over 1x plus 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 at 6. Then it's down 4 over 1, down 4 over 1, and down 4 over 1. So there is my last line. Okay. Now it's time to decide which part to keep. For the first one, the green one, uh, x is less than 0. So clearly, I only keep everything to the left side of 0. So I'm only keeping this part going all the way down, but erase everything else. I don't need any of the rest. And let me also erase that point so that we know later. Okay, next for the blue one, the uh, second function, negative 1. I'm keeping from 0 to 3. From 0 to 3. That is what I'm actually keeping. So I'm erasing everything else. Lastly, the last function is x is greater than 3. So I need everything to the right side of it, which starts right here. Get rid of everything else, including all the extra points. So I'm not confusing myself with the open circle and closed circle. Now it's time to decide what kind of circle am I keeping. First one, x is less than zero. So there's uh, there's no equal sign. So I clearly need an open circle right there. And for the negative one, it is a closed circle on the zero side, which means I need a solid dot right there. But it's an open circle on the three side, so that is an open circle. And lastly, for the last function, the three has an equal sign, it's greater or equal to, so I do need a solid point right there. That is my graph. Domain, everything on to the left, everything to the right, so negative infinity to positive infinity, and range. Well, the range is interesting. Everything below is covered, again, from negative infinity, and here, everything is still covered. You are here still being covered by the first function, by the green one, until you hit right here. That is at negative 2, everything stopped. And then I still have things at 1, so I, uh, negative 1. So I still need negative 1 inside curly braces. Is it a function? Well, if you draw a vertical line, again, you only hit one point, even for these two, uh, the open circle and closed circle, you're still just hit, hitting one solid dot. So it is a function f of negative 4. And negative 4 is less than 0, so I'm going to use the first function 2 times negative 4 minus 2. That is negative 8 minus 2, negative 10. And when it is actually 2, well, it's between 0 and 3, so f of 2 is negative 1. Lastly, when it is a 3, well, 3 is being covered by the third function because that is x is greater than or equal to 3. So I'm going to use the last function, negative 4 times 3, plus 6 is negative 12 plus 6, which is negative 6. And that is everything for 4.19a. Thank you.